Well, hi everybody, Matt here, and as uh, as I typically do whenever Lightroom or Photoshop get an update, I'll do a quick video here to let you know what's new, and this is mid-May of 2019. We have a small, what they call, dot update, okay? It's typically, you know, gonna be every two or three months, um, and then you'll find, you know, one or two new features versus waiting 12 to 18 months to even two years where we used to just get one big update. Now we get smaller updates more frequently. Okay, so let's just dive in here to what's new. And by the way, if you ever want to just see what's new, if you're you think you might be missing something, head up here in Lightroom to the help menu and you can go over here to what's new and it'll take you to this web page that I'm looking at now and you can see all the new things there. The other thing is, is before I even dive in, the use your Creative Cloud updater. I usually just go into Lightroom to make sure I just go under help and I go down here to updates. If you're not seeing an update, the best thing I can tell you is most people uh, can cure this by just restarting their computer. Sometimes you can just restart the Adobe Creative Cloud Updater app, but if all else fails, just restart your computer, and when you do that, you should see and have updates available for you. Okay, the first one here is a texture feature. So let's head over to the develop module, and you're gonna find it under the presence section. It's gonna be right where Clarity and Dehaze is. So the idea of this is, It'll either remove texture or add texture. I, I think it was, it was added more for portrait retouching to, to kind of remove texture from skin, but you do have the ability to put it back in if you wanted to. So let's zoom in on this photo here. And we can go over here and just take your texture slider down. I'll do it at the extremes and you can see that it's gonna give you kind of a, a real smooth, almost in a way, almost a nice glow. Now, a lot of people, We'll ask, all right, so didn't Clarity also kind of soften things too? We used to see people that would, would do skin softening with Clarity, and that is true. I think texture is actually made for it, where I don't think Clarity was ever made for that. It was just a byproduct that some people would try to do inside of Lightroom. I think texture is actually going to be a lot better if you have to do this in Lightroom. And just to show you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click on the photo. I'm going to create a virtual copy, and I'm going to take this version of it and I'm gonna bring the clarity all the way down, and I'll take this version of it, and I'll bring the texture all the way down, and this way we can just kind of compare the two. That's clarity, that's texture. Again, clarity, texture. So as you can see, a definitely a much better result. Now, most people are probably not gonna do this on the entire photo. You're not probably not gonna just crank down on the texture slider on the whole photo, the way I think it'll get used the most is, is we'll go to some tool like the brush tool and we'll take our texture down and then we'll go over here and we'll start to brush on the skin. Uh, one of the things I usually do is I'll turn on the overlay. You can press the letter O for overlay. There's also a little checkbox for it right down here. And I'll turn on overlay and that'll kind of just give me, I can kind of watch what I'm painting here so that I can see if I'm missing any areas. All right, so let's go through. I'm gonna go through kind of quick here. And there, and down there, and there. All right, good enough for now. Let's go press O again to turn that overlay off. And if you wanna see your before and after, there's a little toggle switch right at the bottom of that brush panel. So that's before, that's after. Let's see if we can zoom in one more level here and just get you a, a real close uh, view there. So again, let's crank that down to minus 100. That's before. That's after. Again, before, after. I'm not saying you should go to one, minus 100. In fact, I wouldn't go to minus 100 for this. I just want to show you the extremes of what it can do when you're working with. And also, I always know that it's it's a little bit harder to see this stuff in a smaller video, but I would definitely pull that back. And again, you can always take a look at your before and then your after right there. Now, a couple things that might help you use this uh, is if we come down here, because don't forget, you don't just have to paint. Um, what's going to inevitably happen is, is you'll probably spill over into certain parts of the photo and whatnot as you do this. One of the things that you can do is come down here to your range masking options. Um, you know, if, if you're thinking facial features, if the person has darker facial features, darker hair, eyebrows, eyes, etc., cetera, um, you can come down here to luminance. And then what we can do is restrict that range that we're gonna apply this effect to, okay? And if you're not sure what it's doing, just turn on that little checkbox here, and that'll give you an overlay. And you can see, 
as I keep it totally open and as I start to pull it back in here, you'll see it start to restrict the range in which it gets applied to. So these are some of my favorite tools down here in this range masking section. So if you're not using them, get them into your workflow because they can really help when you're using the brush or the other selective tools that you have inside of here. Okay, let's move on to uh, just another example here. I'll show you the other extremes of where it can go. And, uh, and, I, and I have to point this out because I know somebody's going somebody's gonna to point it out for me if I don't. Um, and I would say, you know, as far as skin softening goes, if you're a high-end beauty retoucher, you're, you're probably not going to use this. Just you're, you're, you're paid by the hour. You're, you're, you're not going to use something where you can just pop open in Lightroom and do it as fast as you can. This is for people that need good results fast. All right. And you're not getting paid for retouching. You're a, a portrait or an event photographer and you've got to do some quick retouching, but your clients aren't paying you for it. It's just expected as part of the gig. So again, probably not for high end beauty retouchers. So let's head over to the develop module for this. And there, so think about it. If it takes away texture, well, it can add texture as well. So if we crank it up to plus 100, you can see it gives us a textured feel there. Does it look like sharpening? Yeah. Does it look a little like clarity? Yeah, a little, a little less like clarity, a little more like sharpening to me. But again, I would just take my brush tool and just specifically go in here and brush it around on the parts of the photo that need it. Again, if you want to see the before and after, that's before, that's after. Experiment between texture, experiment. You have a sharpness slider down here, experiment between the two. I actually think when it comes to the brush, you'll find quite a bit of a difference between the texture than you will the actual sharpness. And at the end of the day, if it makes it look sharp, I frankly don't care what the slider is called. If it makes it look sharp, guess what? It's technically kind of a sharpening slider. So um, no matter what it's called. Next up, uh, I'm just going to quickly point this one out. If you head into, uh, you got to be in the library module for this one. Um, if you head up there to the library menu, you're going to see something called flat field correction right down there in the menu. And I'm going to pull up a web page here because it's probably not something most of us are going to use. I, I had heard of it, but I, I honestly, I had to go look it up to see exactly what it's for. I found an article and I'll link to in the description that talks a little bit about it. It's a very techy thing. Just understand that. And the article is fairly techy, but it kind of gave me a, uh, a good idea of, of what this would be used for. So if you want to learn more about it and see if it's something that might affect you, uh, just check out that link in the notes there. And finally, finally, there's been some uh, some little updates to Lightroom Mobile. OK, so if you update your Lightroom Mobile app, you will see that there is some in-app education and inspiration. It also got the uh, the texture slider and all that. But if you go to your little home section on the Lightroom Mobile app, you can actually explore and yours truly, as well as some other great photographers, did some tutorials inside of there. So it'll walk you step by step through different tutorials and techniques and different things. And then there's also kind of an inspirational section where you can watch, you'll see a photo and then you'll just see it go from before to after and all the steps that went in between, which is kind of neat to watch. So uh, make sure you check out that if you are using the app on your phone as well. Folks, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you again real soon.